Houses like this are the original architectural form of the city. Most of the houses in Lancaster City for working class people looked like this. Life in a small house, it's a very different way of living. We're here at the Little House. Maybe you've seen it, the home on the east end with the boulders and a plaque by the front door. The owner, Lisa Bowman, has invited us in to tour this historic gem. Thank you, first of all, for inviting us out to the Little House. Mm -hmm. We're in the 100 block of East Chestnut Street. Yep. And at one point, this was the edge of the city, about 200 years ago when this home was being built. Absolutely. Well, we've researched the deed back to about 1835. And I can also tell you that the one and a half story colonial is the original architectural form of the city. If you look up the block, you can see a number of them. There's some very small ones on Muster, at Muster Park. Right. But the house next to me with the, with the blue shutters and the green, um, that was actually a one and a half story colonial and the family built up. And then the red brick house with the flag, same builder, same style, one and a half colonial, but that's a much grander house. It's got a carriage house on the back, a long extended summer kitchen. So as you travel around Lancaster, if you're looking, you'll find a lot of these. And they're lovely, lovely houses to live in. Something that catches my eye about this home uh, is the front, the, the hardware, the yep. window hardware. What do you know about these? Well, the hardware on the windows is interesting, the shutters, because it's exactly the same as um, some houses over on Walnut Street that were built around 1835 that are historic. Okay. So um, that so these... helps me know the date is correct, 1835. These shutters were actually used for protection. Yeah. You can close the house up whether you're talking about heat, uh, cold, um, or you know, during the revolution, you know, during the colonial era, the revolutionary, or the early federal era, that's a security thing. Okay. You can literally close the house off. I mean, shutters are not just decorative; that's what they're for. So, when you're looking at the age of a house, these are the kinds of clues that can really help you. If you wouldn't mind, can you show us around the house Absolutely. and take a tour? Yeah, let's take. Well, let's go in through the garden. Okay. So uh, one of the first challenges of a small home, right, yes. is the size of the kitchen. Yes. Not ideal for your uh, typical dinner party, correct? No. You choose your menu carefully and you have relaxed standards. The most people we've ever had at this house, I think we had maybe 20 people one time when I first bought the house. And it was delightful, but it's a good thing that they're all close friends and everybody likes each other. Right. The glass um, cabinets are from the Victorian era. A Victorian housewife could walk into her kitchen and look at her dishes and make sure that her staff was doing the right, was doing a good right. job. Everything's clean, everything's where it needs to be. So these are actually have a, a, an old fashioned practical application to them. So Lisa, right off the kitchen is probably my favorite room in this whole house. This would normally be the dining room, but you've got it set up as a parlor, and an art gallery almost, an art room. Well, you know, in some ways it does function a little bit like a dining room in that there's the kitchen and in the winter months when we're not on the patio, we'll sit here and have dinner. So the room is multi-useful multi and you'll notice there's the conversation triangle here. Yes. Right? So yes. people can sit and chat and we do. So if I sit over here, and you sit over there. Right. This is how the room works, this right? And we have we have tea here, or we have food here. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is we sit and talk. Old houses have wonderful flow. They're just and it's amazing they weren't built by architects. They were built by master builders. Yep. This room to me exemplifies what small living is about. It's the multifunctionality of this room. So everything in the room can be used in different ways. I call this a library table and in grand houses you'll often see a very big round table in the library where there are books and magnifying glasses and sort of objet, ostrich eggs, and shark's teeth. So it's, it's a place to present things but it also functions as a dining room. I have chairs and I will set this for dinner. 
If you go back into the 18 and 1700s and even into the 1600s, houses used candlelight. And so reflective surfaces were incredibly important, especially at night. Yes. And it does make the room feel more open yes. because a mirror, a mirror gives you the illusion of being able to move, but I wanted the mirrors to move what little light there is around. And of course, a crystal chandelier is again, nothing more than a massive reflective surface. So Lisa, one of the things about a small house is not a lot of bedrooms, right? right. And so this is actually a, a nice size room. You got oh, a, it's a great full, size room. You have a full, full bath, bath over no here. Bathtub. And then back here we have uh, the, the dormer that goes mm -hmm. out the front. So we're getting natural light. And we've got two very unique closets in here. again is kind of set up to be multi-purpose. You'll notice there's a round table. Um, so that can work for like books or if I'm working um, from home on my computer. Also, you can eat off of it. Like we'll often eat up here, um, especially if I'm having friends on the deck, I'll set the bar up in here. So everything, again, works together. What you've done here is this is really a one bedroom house, mm -hmm. but it's a suite to die for complete with its own private deck and balcony. What a what a great view, right? This is like mm -hmm. a tree house. You know, I, I, I'm a city girl, but I grew up in the suburbs and I love trees. When you're here, you don't feel like you're in the city. Correct. The garden was the first thing that I focused on. I, I have 20 years experience as an event designer and master floral designer, so plants and green things are incredibly important to me. There is a, a very intentional um, design feature here where your eye is being moved back the space. There are steps, there's a fence, and then as you move back through the garden, there are boulders, there are large flat pieces of stone. It gives you that sense of depth like you're looking at a painting. That's how paintings are constructed. Honestly, really appreciate you letting us come out. You've done an amazing job here. The layering, the functionality of the space. I think this is a true example of how small home living can really function for somebody. Just because it's small doesn't, doesn't mean you can't live grandly.